Everyone, hi. Bruce Moffs and LCSW, Sunridge of Nevada. I want to do a topic tonight uh, that really hones in on what I notice when I do a lot of clinical work and that I see young people making this mistake over and over again. And I want people who are watching this to please watch it with your parent because it goes hand in hand like a lock and key. And the topic is adolescent self-destruction and refers to when a parent, generally a father, is not around. Okay. From a clinical perspective, and I see this over and over and over and over again, please don't feel that if you take alcohol or drugs or do self-destructive behavior, and this information is going to be you know, given back to the parent you're not in contact with, that the missing parent, again, usually the father, but it can be moms too, will come to their senses and be there for you. So they're going to say something like, she, he is going to say, I'm so sorry, I'm sorry what happened, I was wrong, please don't do this anymore, I love you, kiss, kiss, hug, hug, let's go to McDonald's, I got a catcher's mitt in my car, you know, don't believe that hype and get away from that kind of fantasy. And don't think they're going to be like apologizing and hugging and kissing you and crying and the heavens are going to open up and you're going to hear the angels sing. It is not going to happen because if it does, it's extremely rare. And in my line of work, I've seen this very, very, very few times of that ever happening. All you're going to do if you do anything to do with substance abuse, where you flunk out of school, where you get involved with juvenile justice, is that you're going to destroy the relationship with your parent that you're living with and you're going to alienate any chance of long-term happiness. And that other parent that is not there in your life is still shockingly not going to be involved and care enough to come to court, to take you to rehab, okay, to bail you out, or to help you if you get shot because you joined the gang in a sense of hoping to find happiness by adults that are going to care about you. I want to share a story from an old sitcom called Grace Under Fire from a comedian named Brett Butler. She was played a single mom, and on one of the episodes, I never forgot because I used this story like 100,000 times, it's Christmas morning, and she just gave her kids their gifts. And her ex-husband so shows up, and he gives the boy who's in high school bumper guards for the car, and he gives the girl who look, looks like she's in middle school oversized dice. And they go, oh, my God, oh, my God, Dad, thank you, thank you, thank you. Best Christmas gift ever. I love it. I love it. And they run off to their rooms. And Grace looks at her husband and says, I don't get it. I spend two to three months scrimping, saving, looking for every additional penny, give them the gift of their life. And you come in, and clearly you forgot to get them gifts till today. And since it's Christmas morning, the only thing open is a truck stop. And you got what was left to buy. I don't get it. And he looks at her and he says a great two-line comment. He goes, Grace, diminished expectations. Because you're so unhappy, you're so miserable, you don't have a parent in your life that the slightest semblance of interest sends you into peals of joy, happiness, giggling. But that's Hollywood. That's not real life. If they truly cared about you, if they truly wanted to be involved in your life, it wouldn't just be Christmas morning. It'll be Christmas every day of the year by being involved. It's not going to happen. Accept the reality and move on. And it is not your fault. And you're not the cause of the parenting issues or that the parent's not involved. And if they tell you that, don't believe it. Even if you're young and it hurts and it stings like a punch to the stomach, which it often feels like, you did not cause this problem. That's the adult's issue, and it's not yours. And too often I watch as adults give kids who are way too young emotionally or mentally the stigma that somehow they're the reason why the parent's not involved. No, 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 no. The reason why the parent's not involved is because they choose not to be involved. That's on them. They have issues they have to work on, but don't carry that like a mantle, like a cloak on you. When these things happen, and it hurts, it hurts, it hurts. I'm not denying that. Look to other stable people in your life. A coach, a teacher, a youth minister. If it's your mom, love her more. If it's your dad, love him more. Cling to those people that truly care about you, that want the best for you, and don't make their lives a living heck. 
They don't need it. They don't deserve it. It's not fair to them. They're doing the best they can. But too often, it's like, I'm going to zone out. I'm going to do crazy things that I can't walk away from. And what you've done is you destroyed your life. And you think the other parent's going to come in and, and clean up the mess and the broken glass? It's not going to happen. And you'll have that shrapnel within you for the rest of your life. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. This message is from Sunridge of Nevada. Please, this is the one I want the parents and the kids to watch together. Watch and comment. Give us feedback. We're here for that. We love getting what you have to say. Thank you.